Kendall, Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for Monday, the 3rd of May, 2021, and we're about 6.15 in the evening. Bitcoin, I wanna move right there. Today was the launch of the new macro. That's not a mini, it's even smaller than a mini Bitcoin contract. It is 0.10 of a Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> that means a Bitcoin contract in futures is five of the Bitcoins. So if you take five times that, you're about $280,000 round figures, the value of that. You're one fiftieth of that on the macro. I watched the trade today. Very, very close for the first day of trading, tick for tick with this market. It got away from it several times. I saw that. As it grows, it'll get better. But the volume was off the chart for a new contract, so it's probably going to be very successful. I don't know if you've been watching me and how long. When Bitcoin came on the board, I said it should be a one, one Bitcoin contract, not the five. I said, you'll never get the public in with those margins, and you did not. Today you traded, last I looked, was about 8,000 of the minis in just the May contract. That's bigger than the, few, than the regular contract does with all the institutional buying there. So I think this is going to be a very successful vehicle for those of you that want to speculate in the crazy up and downs, and that's the word for it, the crazy moves that the cryptos have. We're going to charge on those contracts a dollar a side for the commission. So if you can't trade it with a dollar a side, why are you bothering? And remember, futures markets are not stock markets. I don't know of any futures brokers that deals for the public that doesn't charge a commission because there's no other source of the income. Uh, you don't get paid for market makers. There's no interest income to speak. The way that we're regulated is not even like stocks. We don't have byproducts, no mutual funds. So it's the commission that drives the business per se. And uh, at a dollar a side, we're at 866-973-2077. Call my staff set your account up and I do cover this in my subscriber videos especially my futures one of course in the morning so in the stock market if you were to tell me and I did I came on the weekend and I said I have no idea what happened on Friday other than it had to be month end squaring I was lost uh, didn't trade the best either you know for my clientele with the recommendations today let's ring the bell nailed it had to go through today, but nailed it. So I am a very happy camper and in a great mood. But in looking at this, the silver's back up to the $27 level. The gold is gonna fight a battle here at that 1800 level. It, this is a whole zone of massive resistance in the market. Energy markets are still looking good. The nat gas, new highs for this particular leg of the move. We rallied in the bonds and notes, keeping interest rates low. The dollar fell on that news and most currencies got a bid. Reversing what happened on Friday. Reversing it doesn't mean you've changed trends and so on. On a weekly chart, we're at a new all-time high as I'm talking to you. That's if it were to close here. This is a weekly chart of just closes, so you have to assume each time we're gonna look at it over the five days, it would be when we look at it, where it would be if the market finished trading right now. When we look at the futures chart, to me this is still distribution. I know you're gonna fight with me on it, and I get it, and I get people that tell me that, they tell me I don't know what I'm doing as a chartist, but I look at it like this. Here's a market with an outside day up. 41.68 was the low. You, made, you took out that day's low the next day. On the rally, in order to prove my theory wrong, and it's only a theory, you have to get back through that high. If not, I think you're going to the closest moving average under the market. Market now is hooking in. You can see what it's doing. And with the swing lines, we do have a pattern of higher lows and higher highs. That's bullish. I get it. The market is probably the question, can it make it back <laughs> to this 41.5860? That's my objective in the market. It's a contra trend move. I get it. I know where I'd be wrong, which would be getting back over the high that you made right there. And that high, just so you know, was a 42.11. 
and we'll see if the trade can do it. The Bollinger Band keeps falling, which is a sign for me that the market's got resistance narrowing in on the market. The trend is up, the bias is up. I have one thing I'm hanging my hat on that I think it's going back to the 18-day average of closes, 41.58.63, and that's taking out the low of an outside day up, period. Doesn't mean I'm right on this. Uh, you're over the 18-day average, the bias is up, the trend is up. I get that people aren't gonna make that trade, but it's what I think's gonna happen, and you even lost the embedded reading. I'm just telling you in the camp that I'm at. I'm in the camp that thinks we're going back down there, and if I'm wrong, I know the number I'm wrong at, 42.11, what is it, 42.11.50 or so? That's it. NASDAQ. Notice how when you lost the embedded reading, you went down here. I want to bring you back, because I know traders don't often pay attention to this. Here is one of my rules, the outside day up. If you take that out within two days, I think you're going down to the Bollinger Band. It's the closest number under the market. It can't be the 100 or that. The closest is the Bollinger Band of those numbers. There is one number that's not here, but for us, let's suffice to say, 13,711. So I didn't get caught with the idea of buying it there. I also think you're in what I call the psychiatry trade. What do I mean by that? Traders go bonkers because they think you're gonna break out up, you don't do it, break down. And the reason it doesn't go either way is you're caught in those tight Bollinger Bands. In the Dow, you have corrected, past tense, corrected an overbought condition the trend is up. I think there's limited upside because of the upper Bollinger Band, but I do think the pros are going to buy this market at 33,835. I think they'll be wrong if you get under 33,628, and from there they'll try to get back to that Bollinger Band. Keep playing. I think they'll keep playing the long side because you've got the bias up, you've got the trend up, and momentum is no longer overbought and it's not po pointing down. Another psychiatry trade, the Russell. You keep hitting that upper Bollinger Band, getting slammed. I cannot tell you how many people I know, because I, I get calls, people will write me, is this it, are we gonna break out? They're saying on uh, CNBC, I like the Russell. Today I was watching it. They love the Russell. The Russell's gonna be what comes alive. I'm just a chartist, okay, and as a chartist, no. I think the chart knows more than all the people. Why? At the end of the day, the analysts for that are going to buy the individual stocks. That's a whole different game than what we're looking at here. Does it mean that I can't help you look at stocks? Not at all. You know we're going to have what's up, and that's coming next week probably. We're just about through preparing everything, how you sign up. And during the week, once, twice a week, I haven't made up my mind, I'm going to open up a Zoom room. You'll be invited to come in, bring your symbols of whatever futures markets, whatever you want to bring, and I'm going to fast like that, sort of like the Kramer thing. Let's bring up the chart, put it in, this is what I see, let's go to the next chart. The difference is I don't have a crew behind me the way that Kramer most certainly does, and the second thing, I'm not as smart as he is. Higher high, lower low. VIX, look at how this market's just sort of stuck right in here. Okay, so you got a lower low, a higher high, the market just in that what? Psychiatry trade again. I stay away from those. If I see a breakout, and I've defined breakouts with you before as to how they come about in top quadrants or bottom quadrants outside of the bands, you haven't had one. In the 30 year, <laughs> again, take a look at the market. This was Friday's action. I'm looking at a market that's got a pattern coming in of lower highs and lower lows. If anything, I'm getting in the bear camp. I did not expect to break through that low and then go up. Now, that's rather dramatic and you haven't fallen apart. So the trend went which way? Back to the upside, a big surprise. And you're narrowing in again. So what has basically occurred for this level of the trade we properly identified this down leg. We then thought the market would go sideways for a while and develop another trade. I have been in the bear camp longer term, and the reason is I think the economy is gonna get very heated.
I think that if you're looking at all the PMI numbers that are coming out, they're fabulous. Europe's opening up. They're ready for you in June. You can book your vacations. You can go on cruise ships coming up. I think the world's getting back to normal with the exception of India. Poor India. I, I mean, I feel terrible. One of our good friends is Indian, and we took her to dinner this week, and uh, Bright, probably the brightest person I know. She's medical research, and uh, she'll be teaching at Harvard in about a year and a half or so. Right now, she's at Rush here, and there's a reason for the two years, her choice. Uh, unbelievably bright, but her family's there. Can, you know, that's all we were talking about. It's just terrible. Higher high, higher low, pretty interesting. Ten-year note. We have a higher high, lower low. Again, sideways action. Dollar index, okay, I showed this in the metals. Here you are in the dollar index on Friday. I'm the first to tell you I was so wrong on Friday. I thought this market was gonna run to the lower Bollinger Band, it was embedded. I thought the market would be a sale. I did not put one out for my subscribers, but I thought it would be a sale up there. Instead, it kept going, and when it got through that number and lost the embedded reading, what's my target? You know, I knew then what I'm thinking. What do you think the target should be? Wherever this 18-day average is going to come in is going to be your target. Why? The lost embedded reading. The only way it could not be the target is the market has to do what? Immediately drop down when it reopens Sunday night and keep dropping to re-embed that number. You tell me what it did today. So when it opens tonight, it'd be interesting. We're out of a trend. You've lost the embedded reading. You've hit the number that I think was owed. And now you seem to be fighting between the 100-day average in green and the 18. It's the flip-flop of this in the euro. They trade. Remember, 40% of the weighting in the dollar index is this, so you, you have to play with that and understand it. This is how you looked at the close of business Friday. How do I know? I was wrong, definitely wrong in this particular trade. I had a feeling you were going to the 18-day average, didn't know how deep it would go from there, and it definitely gave you the, the brief turn. But what is the number that's now the resistance? See, what was support? of the 100 day becomes resistance if you slice through it and go back to the 18 day average. It's like a, a pinball machine. If you ever played it and you push it, I was a great pinball uh, machine guy. And you tilt it, everybody tilts, and you'd hit reset on it, okay? And that's what happens when you go to the 18 day average. If you take my charting course, I explain that philosophy in it. It's a reset, and that's what I think went on. In the British pound, same thing. You came back to the 18-day average looking for what to do next. You got a higher high, lower low. There's nothing to do. It's a good time to watch, not do anything as far as I'm concerned from my style. Where do you think I would think Bitcoin is going to have resistance? What's the first challenge typically of an 18-day average do? It stops the market. Does it always work? No. Look at right here. I thought if, if you were to ask me this night, if you lost the embedded reading, I think you're going to go to the 18-day average of closes, but it gapped it. I didn't expect that. I thought it went to it, so the philosophy I had was right, but I thought it would offer more support. It didn't. So what's the market doing now? It went under the Bollinger Band. You know, I think that's a trap for most people. They, they get overly bearish. Ah, that's where it's coming apart. This thing's going to now. They caught all those nerds that bought it. The nerds are the word that I read all the time. These people aren't nerds. They're far from it. The people that have caught this out of nowhere. They were paying uh, $100 a coin, $57,000 a coin. Come on. Um, the difference between Brent and uh, July, between July Brent and July WTI stuck at that 18-week average of closes, which tells me prices are probably meandering here, and they are. You have a lower and low, higher high. You tell me what happened on th here's Thursday. You back off on the market. Oh, I still have the June here. I'm sorry. I got to replace it. I have this correct. That's just my fault. I have the July here, I have the June. How did I know it? See the, well, you can't see it maybe on the screen. There's a red a button there and it's telling me that. 
I do have the June WTI, I'll fix these. I don't want you in June anything. I just forgot to update these charts. You can see you're at the resistance though in these markets. I do want you in June gasoline still and June heating oil and June natural gas. Those are the right things. But I think for the two uh, crudes, we should move over to the Julys. So interesting time, whoa. Am I, did I, I'm a whole different person today than over the weekend. I was not a happy camper. I hate when I'm wrong. Who doesn't? I learn from it, I wipe it off, and I go to the next trade. And if you don't have the guts to step back into the market and stay with your game plan, you never make it back. You're, you're one of the failures. You've got to get rid of your ego. I wrote, I wrote about that in my book, The Psychology of Smart Money, many years ago when I interviewed people that were successful in trading. What was their characteristic versus guys like me? and I adapted. So it's very interesting as to what you do with that. I want to remind you, Bitcoin, dollar aside, interested in trading it, 866-973-2077. My staff will get you all set up. Um, um, by the way, the margins, <laughs> I think you're talking $2,500 margin or so right now from the exchange. You're quite low in the margin. So it's something that's made for a lot of traders. I'm I. Rapstein, you have a good day. Remember the risk where there's low margin or actually that's a 40% margin. It's pretty high, but where there's margin, there's always risk. And even without margin, there's risk. You have a great day.